The reason we're here today to talk about vaccines is because once again, they are in the news uh, with some questions being raised about the benefit of vaccines and the safety of vaccines. And I think whenever we have the opportunity to discuss what we know about vaccines, about the facts of vaccines and the facts of immunizations, uh, I think we should take that opportunity. You know, if you walk through the halls of Children's of Alabama 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you would have seen small children, one-year-olds, one-and-a-half-year-olds, um, who had sunken eyes and mouths that were as dry as cotton, uh, not urinating at all, very dehydrated, and having diarrheal stool after diarrheal stool after diarrheal stool from rotavirus disease. The fact of why we don't see that anymore, the fact of why those patients are not admitted anymore is because we have a safe and effective, effective rotavirus vaccine. 20, 30 years ago, you would have walked through the intensive care unit. You would have seen a number of patients intubated on breathing machines, struggling for breath, struggling to get oxygen in order to stay alive. And you would have noticed a rash on their skin that might have been the chickenpox rash or it might have been a measles rash. The fact of why we don't see that anymore is because of the safe and effective varicella vaccine and the safe and effective measles vaccine given at the dosing intervals, the schedule that has been evaluated scientifically and has been found to be safe and effective and beneficial. 40 years ago, we would have seen walking through the neonatal intensive care unit, babies with very small heads, distended abdomens, big blotchy things on their skin that made them look like a blueberry muffin, cloudy eyes from cataracts. Rubella is the reason they would have had that. The fact of why we don't see that anymore is because we have a safe and effective rubella vaccine that is used universally and we no longer see that disease anymore. 60 years ago, you would have walked through this hospital. You would have seen patients in iron lungs, children who could not breathe for themselves, who could not move for themselves, and that would be from polio. The fact of why we don't see that anymore is because we have a safe and effective polio vaccine that prevents that. I encourage parents to talk with your pediatrician about it. If you're a first time parent, I encourage you to talk with your pediatrician about it before the baby is born. Begin to educate yourself on the benefits of vaccines, but do it with reliable information. All of these things are medical miracles. And the other fact that's an unfortunate fact is if we stop using the vaccines that are safe and effective that have gotten us to this point, if they are not utilized in an ongoing fashion, it's like taking your foot off the brake and the car will start rolling again. Every vaccine preventable disease, except for smallpox, which has been wiped off the face of the earth, every vaccine preventable disease is at most 18 hours away from us here now. Could be coming in from Africa, could be coming in from Asia, could be coming down from New York, could be coming over from California. They could be connecting right now in Atlanta, ready to land in Birmingham later on, or land in Mobile, or land in Huntsville, or land in Jackson, Mississippi, or wherever it may be. You never know when you are going to come in contact with an infection that is vaccine preventable. Vaccines are safe, vaccines do not cause autism, and there is no reason to not protect your child against the vaccine preventable disease that potentially could kill them by getting the vaccines according to the schedule as recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention.